had five speakers. Five speakers, five different speakers. Okay. And so each one, you know, it's different to everybody. And so I love the expression of everybody. That's why I allow that portal to open up. Did you know how when they started in the prophetic music, how it opened that portal and people started getting words? Did you see that? Mm-hmm. And so once the portal is open, it it's always open over you. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> it's always there. When the heavens open, when Jesus was baptized and the heavens opened over him, they never closed. So we have an open heaven. We live under an open heaven. It's just how much will you pull down. Okay? And so um, that that's really where we're at. And so I love all the different expression in it. But sometimes it takes one to start singing. It takes one to start playing. There's a certain sound. There's a kingdom sound. There's a kingdom uh, sound that begins to happen and it begins to open that up in you. Okay? And so sometimes all it takes is one person. And so I asked Dawn this past week because I knew she, her sonship was being tested. And so um, we are, guess what? Everybody's sonship is tested every day, every week. Okay? And so I just want to um, come in here. I want to say thank you to her for uh, saying yes uh, to what I've asked her to do. And so... Um, I know she, there's much in this young lady. She is very gifted. There's a, there's a great call upon her life. And so she has a wonderful testimony. And so I just want her to share from her heart uh, what sonship is to her. Amen. Are y'all going to sit there? Or are y'all going to get up and, and, and take a, uh, a breather for a second? You're going to get water? Okay. We'll let them get by and then we'll, we're going to give you one right there. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> now look, y'all make her feel okay. Get the door down! This is your family. This is like we're in a living room. So it's a coffee shop, but we're in the living room coffee shop. Wow, brother in the room. Yeah. 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 Y'all are welcome to come back in, by the way. I know that you can, um, they're hot. They always get hot. So they can sit outside here. There's, there's, um, not to make you any more nervous, but there's speakers outside. So the people in the parking lot can hear them. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Emily. Okay. It's the fire of the Lord, I'm telling you. How's that? Give me this, okay? And I'm going to go find really quick what you asked me to bring to the front in my purse. So I'm going to bring you to church real quick or I'm going to send somebody down there, okay? Okay. Here we go. All right. Stretch your hands for us. So, Father, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your anointing upon Dawn to bring your word that you've given her with simplicity and with clarity that all may understand it. I thank you, Lord, for every part of who she is. Uh, the very gift and call that's on the inside of her, you bring it out today, and I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 Hey, Don. Can you pull this up? Here. Okay. 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 Woohoo! Yeah, 
I just want to share a brief testimony with you about me and my father. Um, I grew up with my grandma, and I didn't really get a chance or opportunity to ever um, experience what it was like to grow up with father. Um, my grandma was married to my grandfather, but uh, it was uh, he mostly worked all the time, and so she it was her raising me. So early on, I got that deep root of rejection embedded inside of me, like most of us have. Um, fear instilled in my life very young, and so I was always afraid of things. Um, and then as I got older, I had a deep, deep, deep root of bitterness towards my father. I was very angry at him for, you know, because I didn't understand. I didn't understand why I had to live with my grandma. Why couldn't I be like everybody else and have a mommy and a dad, you know? That's everybody's, every child's desire. Yeah. And um, I have two beautiful boys now, so we're just calling forth their father. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, and I have a lot of unforgiveness. Um, a lot of unforgiveness. So, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, counterfeit. How many of you know that you didn't had counterfeit birthday? Mm-hmm. Uh, Amen. Okay, so I defined counterfeit right here. Made an exact imi- imitation of something valuable or important with the intent to deceive or defraud. Mm-hmm. Fraudulent imitation of something else. Forgery, fake, false, a lie. Exactly describe the enemy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I want us to kind of get this in our mind right now. Um, I'm going to say one thing, and y'all kind of, y'all say the counterfeit. Okay. For example, acceptance, rejection, okay. <laughs> forgiveness, forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah. love, okay. Okay. unity, yeah. honor, yeah. humility, pride, pride. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Trial. Uh-huh. Intimacy. Yeah. Separation. Yeah. Patience. Frustration. Frustration. Peace. Yeah. Hello. 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 The rainbow. God's promise. How the enemy has twisted the rainbow. rainbow oh, here. my goodness. Yeah. 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 So there's a counterfeit, you know, homosexuality. Yeah. yeah. They use that as a big time. Yeah, that's right. True. False seven again. True. Lies. Lies. Healing. Sickness. So I just kind of, um, the Lord uh, really put in my spirit for us to see that everything that God has given us, the enemy counterfeit comes back with the counterfeit. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so we plainly see that the enemy is setting out to deceive us in every area possible. So now I'm going to look at sonship. Sonship is the father and his child, which is each one of us. He wants the relationship with each and every one of us. So, um, what would be the um, counterfeit for sonship? Orphan. All right, so now I want to look at the orphan heart. <laughs> um, the orphan spirit, or, um, he has adopted us, like um, Ellen was just saying. He's adopted us. He's given us opportunity to choose him. Okay, we accept him. And even after we accept him, we still choose to buy the counterfeit lie of the enemy that we're not accepted. Yeah, that's right. right. And so um, this was very dominant in my life. I accepted you as Jesus very young, but I still carried, um, you know, rejection, dishonor, um, you know, all the things of the counterfeit. I still carried the counterfeit. I, was, I said I wanted Jesus, but I was still walking with the enemy. I wanted a father, but I wasn't able to give up my rejection. And so, um, what the Lord has been doing with me for a while now is um, showing me these things. And he's also brought my earthly father to my life. 
and also years and years me and my grandmother prayed that um, you know we would get a redo or you know get a chance to um, have a relationship restored yes and so he's been down here for you know a couple years or four or five six I don't know anyway uh, in those some of those years I was feeling my addiction and so I've been clean for you three years now hallelujah <laughs> Last Sunday, he dropped in my spirit that I was holding on to my orphan heart, that I wasn't willing to release it and let it go for oh, him. Wow. And he wasn't only doing that in the spirit, but in the natural. He's given me a double proportion. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Not only saying, I'm here, daughter, but he brought my dad and said, I'm yeah. here, daughter, as well. Amen. 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 And so, um, We are never able to fully accept the Father's heart, holding on to our orphan heart. Mm. That's right. <laughs> Amen. That's so good. So some orphan talk is, I don't belong. I can't. Nobody ever loved me. I don't fit in at this church. I'm okay alone. It's just me and Jesus mm. over here by ourselves. Yeah. And so even when you have accepted Jesus, he can still lie to you. He can yeah. still tell you yeah. lies. And so, um, I want to, I got three scriptures, and I love the passion, so we're going into passion. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, the first one is uh, Matthew 17, 2. Then Jesus appearance was dramatically altered a radiant light as bright as the sun poured from his face and his clothing became luminous and dazzling like the lightning he was transfigured before their very eyes so down here at the footnote it talks about that's why i love it because it gives me explanation explanation when i don't understand wow. mm -hmm. uh, moses also went up to the mountain and received an impartation of glory his face shone and had been had to be veiled. The transfiguration of Jesus is also part of our destiny. Yes. yes. Or the um, or the same Greek word is used twice for believers being transfigured by the renewing of our minds and by the glory of Christ within us that will complete the transfiguration into Christ's image. So son sonship is being transformed into your father's image. Yes, amen. And how we do that is renewing our mind, washing our mind in the word, yes, yes. reading the Bible. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And so that brings us to Romans twelve two. Mm -hmm. Stop imitating the ideas and opinions of the culture around you today. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. And then 2 Corinthians 3 18. Mm -hmm. We can all draw close to Him with the veil removed from our face, and with no veil, we become like mirrors yeah. who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. We are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level of his glory to another. Yeah. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And so, um, you know, when he, he left us with his Spirit, so, um, Um, he left us with his spirit. Um, when he walked with the disciples, they didn't, they didn't have his spirit. But when he left, right, he left his spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so where do you still live? Okay. <laughs> You're doing good. So I'll go a little deeper. If I don't pick up what sonship fully is into my heart, I don't understand what God's plan is for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We don't understand his heart and what his plans are. 
Therefore, we are never able to fully advance his kingdom the way he has called us to do. Good. So, read that again. Okay. If I don't pick up what sonship fully is into my heart, I don't understand what God's plan is for the kingdom. We won't understand his heart and what his plans are. Therefore, we are never able to fully advance God's kingdom the way he has called us to. That's good. So, everything starts with sonship. Yeah. For us to know what he wants or the plans that he has in his life, we have to know who we are in him, his yeah. image, yeah. to be mirrors of him. And so, um, I made this little thing. Don't be so familiar with your orphan heart, the bondage the enemy has enslaved you for so long, you reject the Father's heart. Such <laughs> <laughs> Woo, glory. Amen, amen. <laughs> and so you don't want to hold on to that bondage that has kept you miserable yeah. and in pain for so many years. You want to let loose of that orphan spirit. <laughs> so, Father, today, right now, we have dismissed that yes, orphan spirit. Yes, we did. And we accept your love. Yes, yes, and we thank you for the plans that you have for us yes, that are beautiful. Yes. And comforting, and they're not to harm us, but they're to give us a hope and a future. Yes, yes. Oh my God, we just thank you. thank you. We thank you in all these things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so the last part of it is the Father is always bringing gifts. He always wants more for His children. He always wants to bless you with more. So right now, um, I want to play a song for you. And as you listen to these words, some of you have heard of it, maybe you won't. Um, think of the Father is blessing you with this right now. And Miss Dana or somebody may come along and anoint you with oil. And if you don't want that, just raise your hand so she knows to have you. <laughs> Craig's getting the song. Dawn called me yesterday and she said, this is what I'm saying. This is what I want to do. And so she had it planned. The Lord really downloaded it to her and she executed it. Very well. Can we just give her a hand? I think a teacher is better than me. Um, um, but she would go ahead and, and like she said, this is what she saw. She saw this this song being played, and she saw um, us moving through an anointing. And so, if you don't want to be anointed, that's fine. I'll do your hands because everything you put your hands to, the Lord wants to increase. Oh, yeah. Okay, you don't have to anoint your hands. Matter of fact, I would probably rather anoint your hands. Because to me, that is what sonship is, you know, which he is our head. And so we learn to be a son. It says Jesus learned to be a son through the things he suffered. And so he modeled, he fleshed out what a son was supposed to do and be. And so uh, we've got to pick that up. And so go ahead and play that song, buddy. Most of y'all know this. You can stand and worship if you want to. It's Terry Joe, the blessing. <laughs> I promise. My son's sitting behind me and he'll unplug me. <laughs> There's just a couple of things that the Lord had given me this morning. It wasn't very much, but I want to follow up from what we what we said last week. Do you remember me saying that if the enemy can pluck you up and get you out of becoming out of your process of becoming a true son? then he'll never have to deal with you as a father in the ministry. Yeah. And so God's looking for a son that he can produce a father out of. Mm. And there's a process to that, you know. Um, there's a process to it. Um, and so I just want to encourage you not to allow yourself to be removed from that process. You know, sometimes we just got to keep ourselves in the fire. He's in there with us, Amen. He didn't leave us. He didn't forsake us. But the Lord, well, this is what he gave me this morning. He said, my order. God's, so I wrote down God's order. And he said, my order is always from a father to a son. Mm. From the beginning. From Genesis all the way to Revelation, it is from a father to a son. And we can never forsake that. Because if we do, then we miss the gospel. Period. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. comes from a father to a son. Whether that be, um, I love... Um, <laughs> 1 Corinthians 4.14 4, in the passage. I'm going to read it to you because it's it, it speaks to me. Because we have to move from a church mindset to a kingdom mindset. 
And I just want to tell you something right now. Many people can be saved, and this is where we as the church have to change our way of thinking. Many people can be saved, and they can be Christians and go into heaven and still miss kingdom. Now, you may not understand what I just said, so I'm going to say it again. You, we see people struggling with the process and think they're not Christians. You're missing kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everybody struggles. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short. Listen, he has to remind me every day, and we need to remind ourselves every day, look where I came from. Uh, there was once that I was lost and didn't have a vision to see, but he found me. And he picked me up and he dusted me off and he set my feet upon the solid rock. You know what I mean? The song, you know, he, he, he fixes us. He fixed the broken. And a, a few days ago, I, I was just studying, and the Lord gave me this thought uh, for the day. I was just reading a bunch of different things, and he said, only the human heart can be broken and whole at one time. And he says, he ever spoke something to you that just blew your mind? You're like, what? what? what is, wait a minute. How is that? There's lots of times he speaks things to me. Mm. And I have to wait for the time to say it. Because there's times he'll speak things to me and he'll say, you're going to have to show me a scripture, Lord, because folks is going to want scripture to back up what I'm saying. You know, I get you and I know I heard you, but... You know, there's been many things he's shown me things about and then went back and gave me scripture later. And so that's what he said. How many of you understand what a broken and contrite heart is? Yes. Yeah. How many of you in Matthew chapter 5, it talks about the meek shall inherit the earth. That meekness is that broken and there's a heart of the Father there. It is literally knowing the power that you possess and doing it with gentleness, basically. Uh, Airplane. Do you remember me teaching you gift wrap fruit? Do you remember how I gave you the the, the um, scenario of a of a jet airplane? The bigger the jet, the more gentle the landing. You'll sleep through it. If it's a massive jet, because it's got so much power, but it's power restrained, it knows how, and you just gently land and take off, and you won't even you'll be asleep. Yeah. The smaller the plane, the rougher the ride. <laughs> Do you, do you understand? Yeah. And so there, there is a, there's a fruit in there that the Lord is wanting us to understand. The meek shall inherit the earth. Meekness and gentleness go together. And you can't mistake somebody's meekness for weakness. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Moses was meek. And there were a lot of people who mistook his meekness. 3,000 of them got swallowed up in the earth. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Do you understand? Oh, yeah. You cannot usurp the authority that God has placed over your life. This is sonship. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it, when you try to usurp it, it's going to cause destruction every time. There is an order that God places. And sometimes when people come into our church, because the order and the structure is very different, because I don't go by a list of rules. I don't go by what man-made structure and order has, has established here, but I go by what God's saying to do. Yes. And I'm not telling you that that's the easiest thing in the world to do. Because I feel people. I'm a feeler. That's how I discern is I don't always see, like some of you do, I feel. And so I can sit in this room right now, and I can feel the every emotion in this room. And the maturity in that is I've learned that I, I, come on somebody, yes. I, through the Holy Ghost, control my atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. I'm real. That's where maturity, Jesus, betrayal walked in the room with Jesus and he never, never once freaked out. Matter of fact, he gave Judas the sop. He gave him food. That's right. He gave him a place of honor at the table and said, here you go. And as soon as that sop was given to him, he had a choice. When you give honor to somebody and you choose meekness every single time, you go into that thing with that gentleness and you give it, guess what? That's honor. And when honor is given, it causes people to make a choice. That's right. Right. That's right. 
So I said, he looked at him and he took it back and he finished it and he said, whatever you gotta do, do it quickly. Get it over with. Because I already know what you're gonna do. You see, when the Lord begins to deal with us about his order, there is a certain order that he make, that He wants things to happen in. And one is from that father to the son. And the reason that he places us in ministries, uh, fathering ministries especially, is to get us out of... I don't want to... He gets us into kingdom mindset. Because the Lord said he was going to build his church. What happens is we try to build it. And he says, I'm, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. I'm just going to give you the keys to the kingdom. I need you to advance the kingdom and I'll build my church. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And so when we get kingdom, we'll learn that our advancement in the kingdom, in the, in the, in the process of that, his church gets built. I'll give you an example. David. Well, let me go back. This is God's order. Um, let me just read 1 Corinthians 4, 14. 1 Corinthians 4, 14, and I'm going to read it in the Passion. Maybe I'm not, because that's not it. That's the Amplified. Let me get it in the Passion, because I love what it says. Oh, my thing is not. There it goes. My thing is not working. It says... It's 14 and 15. I'm not writing this to embarrass you. Then this is a this is a letter that Paul was writing to the Corinthians, okay? I've been in Corinthians all for the last several days. He says, I'm not writing this to embarrass you or shame you, but to correct you as the children that I love. For although you can have countless babysitters in Christ telling you what you're doing wrong, you don't have many fathers to correct you in love. But I'm a true father. To you, for I became your father when I gave you the gospel, and I brought you, and I, you know, began to teach you. And so, there's a certain point of fathering that we have to understand. Um, this is, I'm just going to be. Re- can I just be real with y'all today? Can I just be yeah. real open? Church mentality says I need to come to church, and you need to give me what I need. It meets the needs of people. Okay, kingdom, on the other hand, is about meeting the needs of the father. And in that, he meets the needs of people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does everybody understand that? Well, that feels kind of heavy. Y'all are all just looking at me like, hmm. It's the will of God. It is his will. And so when we are advancing and we're up, why do you think he said in all the parables, the kingdom of heaven is as this. Mm -hmm. And over and over, every parable said the kingdom is like this. There's the church. Now, yes he, yes, he talked about church. He talked about his ecclesia. He talked about those things. But what man has made it is something totally different. And so we're coming into a dispensation where I started talking about, I'm prophesying at the first of this year, that we were coming into a fathering, uh, a parenting, and a fathering um, maturation this year. That we were going to see fathering ministries begin to rise up. Okay, and so in the spirit, and I truly believe that. Why? Because God is looking for sons because the earth is groaning, come on, for the sons of God to be made manifest. When God put Adam in the garden and he gave him dominion, he told him, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. He set an order. Do you understand? Everything was in right alignment and in order. And when man fell, everything toppled out of order. And so through the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, <coughs> come on, he brings the order back. Are you coming with me? And so where are we in that picture now? We as sons have to take dominion. That's what the church is supposed to do. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. We go out, we advance the kingdom, and every sphere of influence that he's given us, we gather as a church body, but it is not to meet the needs of people. We gather as a church body, as an ecclesia, to legislate governmentally in the spirit realm so that the government of heaven can come to earth. Yes, yes. That we begin to talk about issues that are going on in our city and let's pray and declare and decree issues that are going on in our nation let's declare and decree and pray and you know what some of you he may send you out into those mountains he may send you into the mountain of 
media to transform it. He sends you from church into the kingdom. And as you're advancing the kingdom out there, he builds the tabernacle. Does that make sense? I'll give you a couple of scriptures. First Samuel chapter 8. I'm not going to go to all these. I'm just going to briefly tell you. Go read it. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 8. Um, before we go there, let me just say this. God set up the Father's order. Let me read my notes. He found a son that he could he could make a father in Noah. Okay? Because, like, he was mad. He said, my heart is grieved. I'm fixing to wipe him off the face of the earth. But he said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because he looked and he saw a son. See, the eyes of the Lord ran to and fro over the whole earth, looking for a man who will stand in the gap, who will be a son, and follow that order of sonship. And say, Lord, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I lose everything. It doesn't matter. I'll get it restored on the other side. If I never get it restored back here on this earth, I'll see it on the other side. Does that make sense? And so Abram was Noah's great grandson. That's Abraham. See, Abram was Abram until he became a father to, mean, uh, to the nations, and then that's when he got the name Abraham. Okay? Do you understand that? So, um, we see that in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there, and then that Jacob had 12 sons, which became the nation of Israel. So if we really want to change a nation, we've got to get the generational blessing flowing. That's the father to the son. Do you understand that? Does everybody understand that? Yes. Okay. So um, all of these men were fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob's sons were fathers to the tribes, the different tribes. So tribes we study that we look at and we advance. How do you think you advance the kingdom? This kingdom first, <laughs> right here, <laughs> because you can't give out something you don't have. And so when this is in right alignment, spirit, soul, and body, come on, then the flow of the spirit begins to happen in a greater way. And so um, we, we see where all of those um, sons became the tribes and it became that nation. Um, and so the blessing of God passed from father to son, from generation to generation. We just saw, heard the song. Did you know that the generation goes to a thousand years once you get it flowing? The blessing? Yeah. It says a curse goes into the third and the fourth generation, but once you get the blessing going, come on now, and we all know that we are blessed. Why? Because of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We're grafted. We are adopted exactly into that and grafted into that root, which we automatically are in line for the blessing. But we've got to walk in it. Again, it's been given. How much are you going to pull down? It's already there. How much are you going to walk in? Because we have a choice. I told somebody one day, and I gave that testimony last week. God does not make you do something you don't want to do. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He gives you the choice. That's why I said many people are saved, but they might miss kingdom. The kingdom mentality. The kingdom. That's why. Can I just say to you, your mindset has to change. Our mindset has to change. Yeah. Because you remember when he says, and he lists all these things that will not receive the kingdom. People want to say, uh, you're a, you say you're a Christian, but you're doing this, this, and this. Listen, something different. Kingdom is different. Yeah. 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 Kingdom is different. It's the whole of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you understand? The Godhead. And so there's a difference in that. And we have to begin to understand that sometimes we judge a thing and we don't even understand how the order of God works, how the kingdoms work. There's a kingdom of darkness, there is a kingdom of light. And there is a kingdom of self. Right here. And you're, you're, either, you're either governed by the, 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 the kingdom of this world or you're governed by the kingdom of God. It's up to you, the kingdom of heaven. See, the kingdom of heaven is on this earth. It's not just your profession of being Jesus, yeah. of having Jesus in your life, but it's the possession of the power that he already gave you. Right. Yeah. That's kingdom. Yeah. That's, right. That's kingdom. We'll see, we'll see many people in heaven, but they may have missed kingdom on this earth. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. does everybody understand? If you don't, raise your hand so I can explain it better. Thank you. 
Because this is why we have to stop the judging, stop the critical, stop that. This is why people get critical. You see someone struggling on their journey, and because you have kingdom going on, or you think you do, then you want to judge them because they're struggling. Teach them. That's kingdom. Do you understand? Okay, and so God called a nation of Israel his firstborn in Exodus. He called Israel his firstborn. He said, let my son go to serve me. And if you don't, I'll slay your firstborn. That's what God said. Because Pharaoh wouldn't let, remember? He wouldn't let the Israelites go. And it and ended up, it was his choice. He ended up, the firstborn of all of Israel, all of uh, Egypt was killed. And that's how he let the, uh, the people go. So God said, I chose this country. I chose this people as my people. They are my first son. That's why he always says, you got to do Israel first. Because it's just the way it is. <laughs> I mean, it's just scriptural. And so, God chose the tribe of Levi, here we go again, to be priests in his house. Aaron and his four sons were put in the position of the priesthood. That represents the fivefold ministry, guys, found in Ephesians chapter 5. That brings us into the New Testament. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Amen? So we see that right there, and what is it? What is that for? When he ascended, he gave gifts to men, right? And he gave what? The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher for what? The equipping of the saints for the perfecting. So that we could come into the full maturity of Christ. And we're talking about maturity again. Because sons that are mature do what the Father says do. They don't waver. Oh, I'm not going to tell you you don't waver. Because sometimes you still do. I have to go back and say, Lord, I need I need you to show me in your word one more time what you're wanting me to do here. Because I don't want to miss him. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss him. I don't want to miss the shift. I don't want to miss uh, his timing. Because if we do, it can cause somebody else to stumble. And the heart of the Father has got to be so embedded in you that that's, the operate, that's where you operate from. Amen? Amen. So, can I just tell you this, that even in the, in, and I can't remember right now where it is without looking it up, there's a scripture that said, is in the New Testament, I think it might be, um, I can't remember right this minute, but it says that Levi paid tithes in the loins of Abraham. That was his great-grandfather. And if that, see, that's the generational blessing. Levi was... The tribe of, was a son of Jacob, but he's the tribe of Levi, which are the priests of the temple, right? right. They're the ones who minister to the Lord, okay? But listen, if Levi paid tithes in the loins of his father, great-great-grandfather Abraham, that means that generational blessing of the tithing to him. There are some of you in here today that your great-grandparents have been givers and no one ever picked up the seed. Mm. No one ever received it. Do you understand? Yeah. You pay tithes in the loins of them. Yeah. That's the blessing. And you can go back and claim that because it's your right as a son. As a natural lineage. Do you understand that? Spiritual lineage too. That's deep. Well, I feel that falling pretty heavy in here. And then if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 8, I just want to tell you what this is talking about. What happened here is that, you know the story, that when Samuel came on the scene, it was because Eli, the priest, that had the priesthood, his sons were terrible. <laughs> they, were, they were taking the bribes. They were, they were uh, taking bribes and stuff for sex. They were doing all kinds of things they had no business doing. And so... Um, Samuel comes as a young boy. He begins to serve uh, Eli and the priesthood as a young boy. And he, and he gets the call of God on his life. And Samuel is what started the prophetic. He was the first one who had the company of prophets. He was the first one that... Uh, so we see where he literally did away with the lineage of Eli and that priesthood and replaced it with a prophetic... Come on, this is a type and a shadow of what happened in the New Testament with Jesus. So he replaces that lineage 
with a pure heart. This is why the pure prophetic has to come out. We can't have what we've had in the past. You want to know why the things are being shaken right now? Because the true prophetic needed to come. Exactly some stuff that you posted. Because it's the truth. There is a heart of God and a heartbeat of God that needs to ebb, that we need to ebb and flow from in the prophetic. And so and it, and it takes that apostolic prophetic anointing. I'm almost finished. But they wanted a king. They went to Samuel because they saw he put his sons in, in those positions. And his sons began to not be good. They began to not follow after the things of God. So how many of you, and this is for some of you, some of you have children in here that are not following after the things of God even though you've taught them. Don't, don't take that on. Everybody has a choice. I was brought up in a house. We had three kids. Two of us are pastors. The other one is, we don't know where. <laughs> I'm going to be nice. He's not. He's not. <laughs> uh, and so, um, do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it, it's choice. Every one of us has a choice to be a son or not. Okay? And there is a, a healthy bond in relationship and a love of the Father that corrects with love. Not just tells you right from wrong. Some of you that are screaming out, but somebody just tell me what to do. You're looking for an unhealthy relationship. And you will become very codependent upon a pastor and a pastoral thing. And then it gets twisted. Yeah. This is There's an order that God wants to bring in the church today. And it is not where we've been. There is a restructuring and a realignment. And God is shifting it. He's doing it. And so we just have to say, yes, Lord. And... I don't like being disheveled how we are right now. Every place I go, it's like that. I'm like, okay, Lord, I hear what you're saying to me, you know, so let me get it right. Let me cultivate my heart. Let me let you dig out anything that needs to be dug out here because I, I know what you've called me to do. And I don't want my lineage replaced. I want to move forward in the fullness of all you're calling us to be. So Israel cried out for a king. They said, don't let us have a judge anymore. We want a king. We want to be like the other nations. Listen, that's dangerous. And they rejected God's order of father to son. They rejected the theocracy that God had set up with the judges. They rejected it because they wanted the order of man instead of the order of God. And see, that's where we're at today. That's where church went to. Thank you. That's where church went to. And we followed after an order of man and not after an order of God. Because everybody says exactly what one of y'all prophesied earlier. It's, oh, it's what you said. It's just Jesus and me over here. I'm submitted to God, so I don't have to be submitted to you. God don't work that way. No, he yeah. he, We've got to submit to one another. This is why it's so hard when people come into this body and they and they have that mentality. They want to get real close to me and they want me and me only to validate them. And I push them to other people in here. Because if we cannot receive from one another, we've already lost the battle. Amen. Because the body supplies to the body. It's not just me. It's not about me. That's why I like everybody to get up and give their expression. That's why I want to hear what you're saying. Because I, it took me a long time to get to this place. But I know what God is telling me to do in this hour. I know what, where he's telling us to go. I've not lost heart and I've not lost vision. Did I think it was going to be this way? No, but it never <laughs> is. <That's right. sighs> You would think I would know that by now, you know, and so not get upset. But we cannot do away with that order that God brings us to. I don't care even if you don't like somebody that is in leadership. If I place them there, it's only because God told me to do it. Right. Yeah. You don't work your way up a ladder here because it's not. A, it is not a hierarchy in this house. It's not. I look at you. I see the gift on the inside of you, and listen. I see the other stuff too, but I choose to look at the gift because that's what God's interested in. And if we can cultivate that gift and get you moving in your purpose, the rest of that mess goes away. If I can keep your eyes focused on that. And so when you fail to submit to one another when there has been an order that has been placed, you're not rejecting them. You are rejecting God. Because that's what he said in these portions of scripture that I'm reading in 1 Samuel 8. Go ahead and read it. 1 Samuel 8, 9, and 10. Go on and read through it. 
Because he ends up putting Saul as the king. Israel did not trust God to intervene and deliver them how he had done in the past. He had already done it with Eli's case. But then they go murmur and complain and say, give us a king. We want our order. They wanted to change the order of God to the order of man and be like other nations. Oh, my God. Write this down. They should have prayed for revival within God's order. We cry out for revival all the time. But it's not always in the order of God. So that to me spoke volumes. There's an order that God places. And when you go to... Nothing wrong with listening to other ministers. There's nothing wrong with drawing from different sources. I have no problem with that. Because I do it. Okay? I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is that when you look for all of those things to validate you and you fail to connect with the people that are right in front of you, you have to check your own heart. You have to check your own heart. I have to check my heart. Because that's what it's about. God wants relationship with us and he teaches us how to do relationship by having relationship with one another. Amen. It's not always easy. See, just because there was corruption in some of the sons of um, Samuel are sons that you may see in a house. I have lots of people come to me and say, tell me lots of things that they see. You cannot abandon the order of the Father. We cannot abandon that order. To abandon the order of God puts you in the same unrighteousness as those leaders themselves. Come on. When you murmur and complain and you speak against them and you say they're doing this, 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 and this, you put yourself in the same unrighteousness as they are in. How about praying? There's a thought. The correct response would be to pray. Pray for restoration of righteousness in them within the order of God. Here we go to the order of God again. So if we pray for someone that we see may be struggling or slipping, like I said before, if we pray for the righteousness to be restored in the order of God, then they'll come back in to right alignment. Yeah. That makes sense? Yes. 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 It's how we need to learn to pray. Not God, show them where they're wrong. <laughs> God, restore your righteousness in them. In your order, and in the order and alignment of the house, and with you, in the alignment of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. I think that's it. When Israel wanted to be like the other nations, they lost the flow of the generational blessing. This is critical. They changed their submission and rejected the order of God and cut themselves off from the blessing contained within the order that they rejected. Y'all, this is where false religion came in. They were no longer set apart. They were no longer set apart. Saul eventually was rejected by God and anointed and anointed David. But can I tell you something? When the sons of Eli died in battle, the, Israel had went to war, and they lost part of this battle, and so they came back and they said, we're going to get the Ark of the Covenant, and we're going to parade it in front of the enemy, the Philistines, and so that they'll be afraid. Because they knew the presence of God. They knew about the Ark of the Covenant. They knew how powerful God was. And so this is what we do. We parade Christianity around without covenant. Yeah, come on. Wow. Come on. And you wonder why we wonder why we don't get the victory. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whew. That's heavy. Yeah. Because that's what they did. And guess what happened? The Philistines killed them and took the Ark of the Covenant. 
And Eli had become so fat and so dim of vision when they told him that the Ark of the Covenant had been lost in his, his, his boys that he failed to correct. He fell over. He, he, he was dim of vision. He couldn't even see. And he fell over backwards and died. So we can no longer pretend. And then when David comes, he literally reestablishes. And I've been saying, it's the tabernacle of David. It's 24-7 worship. You see, God told David, you're not going to build my house. I'm not asking you to build me a house. You bring in my presence, and I'll build my house around that presence. Yes. Yes. Come on, yes. Come on now. That's where we are, are. That is restoring the tabernacle of David. When we bring in the presence, oh my gosh, do you hear what I'm yes. saying? He builds his house. He builds his house. And we, we advance the kingdom and he builds his house. And it's all around the presence. You want to know why he's pushed us in here like this and crammed us in here? And I mean, there's some that are not coming. Because this is not everybody. <laughs> And that's okay. I mean, it really is. Um, I get it. Some people just have issues about being this close. That's okay. Maybe. God wants intimacy. And he wants us so close. Even as a core group, if we can understand that unity is diversity and harmony and not conformity, then we'll see expansion. And so, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all I got. Yeah. I want you to be a son. I want, I want the maturity level to come up in us and that we begin to understand kind of what the Lord is, is rearranging and doing uh, in this hour. Uh, there's, a, there's a group. and there, I mean, some of y'all come from Tyler. Some of you come from, this is what's so funny. There's very few people that go to church here that's from Carthage. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you are from Carthage? Raise your hand. How many of you are from another city around about here? <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. Kilgore, Longview, Henderson, Tyler, uh, Gary. Ma'am? I'm sorry. I said, I was just naming off all the little cities around about. 